Hello and welcome back to another episode if you want to do what. Today we've got Rebecca on and she's a private pilot. Hi Rebecca. Hi, you all right? Yeah, good, thank you. How are you? I'm um, brilliant, thank you. Good stuff. Um, should we jump straight in then, Rebecca? Do you want to tell everyone a bit about what you do? Um, at the minute, I am just a private pilot and I am our building. So you need, I think it's roughly about 150 hours solo and then you can get a commercial pilot's license so I'm just working towards that really and I'm doing my ATPLs as well which are exams which you need to do your commercial pilot's license and they are quite hard so I'm doing that full time and then once I've done those I can hopefully get my commercial pilot's license and I'm hoping to do it in Sweden um, oh wow but we'll see how it goes we'll see <laughs> I mean it's such a cool job isn't it what what made you want to go into this um well when I was younger when I used to go on holiday I used to get on the plane and I thought wow like this is something I would love to do mm. I'd just love to be in that cockpit as like a job and it's different to like an office job because you get so it's just perfect like you get amazing views um, the job's just brilliant it's just gorgeous and I'd love to do that as a job so I just thought I'd want to do that when I was younger and I just love it <laughs> I love the freedom of it as well so how did it um this journey sort of start for you what what was it after you finished school that you had to do to start becoming a pilot so I did my A-levels at college so I didn't really know I wanted to be a pilot at this point so I was just doing my A-levels as normal I did maths, physics and chemistry. So then I finished that. But at first I wanted to go into the RAF, but then I just thought, wow. you know, it's a bit it's a bit too strict for me. <laughs> I just wanted something a bit more relaxed. So I decided around after college I wanted to do that. So I just applied to a local school near me. There's one called Barton near Manchester. So I just applied to a school there, did a trial lesson. And then I realised that I really liked it. So I just continued and then they helped me along the way with like my training. And then I passed in December 2019. So I've had my licence nearly two years. So it's going all right. Wow. And so being a private pilot, what kind of things are you doing at the moment? Um, Not a lot, really. I'm just our building. So what you do there is you can just fly wherever you want, really. So... I've been to places like the Isle of Wight and I fly from Blackpool. So that's like a two hour flight. So you can just go wherever you like and you can go land somewhere, have some lunch and you can take your friends and your family wow. and they absolutely love it as well. And it's just amazing. I just love it. And uh, I've done a bit of aerobatics as well. Oh, very so you cool. can just, yeah, you can just do whatever you want, really. <laughs> yeah, so it's going all right. How long do you think you'll be able to, um, how long till you, you'll rack up all of your hours to become a commercial pilot? And is there anything you specifically want to do within that commercial world, any particular airline? Um, I'd hope to be finished by maybe next year. It's just, it depends all on finance because it's so expensive. Um, it just takes so long. And I'd just love to join the airlines, hopefully. Like, I'm not set on that, but that'd be ideal for me like I've not got my sight set I'm just open to whatever job I can take really see what happens um but I've worked for Jet2 in the past as cabin crew and check-in agent so I'd love to join back with them again hopefully yeah that'd and be, be cool. a pilot with them is there is there any you know where can you take a commercials commercial pilot's license apart from you know your typical sort of airline holiday kind of chartered planes what else can you do with a commercial pilot's license yeah, there's quite a few different things you can do so you can do like transportation so i know someone who carries like um medical supplies for hospitals and things like that um you can do like when skydivers go up and you fly the plane you know it's just little things like that really it's mostly just transport and mm -hmm delivering things if it's not in the airline industry and obviously you can do like private flying for like celebrities or just anyone with a lot of money really <laughs> <laughs> just and, flying uh, around <laughs> so obviously we mentioned it's quite expensive to do your uh, your pilot's license and rack up enough hours 
Are there any yeah. ways you can sort of get almost a, uh, a bursary or something like that? Or are there any courses you can go on that will sort of fund part? Do the airlines offer anything like that? Yeah, there are quite a few bursaries. I've not actually looked into it myself because I didn't really know that they existed until like recently. But um, when you're training to be a pilot, you can look online there are quite a few websites that offer bursaries and you can apply for those and you get shortlisted and you have to do like interviews it's kind of like applying for a job really so you can do all that and then they'll shortlist you and then they'll let you know if you've got the bursary so they'll pay for quite a bit of your training to be fair so it'll save you quite a bit of money so it's definitely worth doing I'd recommend it definitely once you've uh, got all your hours uh, wrapped up and you can become a commercial pilot, is there anything additional you have to do? Do you have to then be trained on some of the larger aircraft or um, is that fairly simple? Yeah, you need to, um, what you need to do as well, you need to do your, it's called an instrument rating. So that's where you fly and you can't really see anything. It's all just clouds and it's all just white. So with that, you learn to fly in bad weather and things like that and you also need your night rating as well so that helps you fly at night Um, that doesn't take too long to be honest once you've got them you can go straight into applying for a commercial pilot license school and you can get cracking on with that I'd imagine the sort of move from you know how big are the planes you, you're in now is it sort of a, a single seater a couple of seats or Oh, it's only four seats. They're tiny. They're only little. <laughs> right. So moving from that into, you know, a commercial jet. I mean, you've seen the we've all seen the pictures of commercial jets on the on the movies yeah, with the a big old bow a million yeah. buttons. And, you know, how do you even begin to sort of transition from the smaller planes up to the bigger planes? Is it a lot of exams or something like that? Um, yeah. So the exams I'm doing now, it teaches a quite a lot on the instruments that you need to work with so that's quite useful and you'll just eventually learn like you get taught from at the minute I fly a single engine so when you do your commercial you get taught to fly two engines and then with that you can sort of build your way up and then once you get to fly a commercial jet they'll teach you in the training of what you need to know about all the different instruments and all the new things that you need to know i mean there are a lot of dials to be fair but i don't think <laughs> you actually need most of them <laughs> <laughs> That's helpful. There's so many of them <laughs> yeah um, so what it. is it you expect an average day to be like once you're a commercial pilot um so already being cabin career i can kind of imagine that it's really long days so i used to do like 12 hour days 12 wow. 13 hours um and we worked alongside the pilots, so um, the shifts are quite long as well. And um, it definitely gets busier in summer. So in the winter, it'll be quite quiet. And then in the summer, it'll be really busy and you'll have a lot of flights. You'll be working like nearly every day. Um, but the good thing with that is as well, you can be put on standby as a pilot. So some days you won't actually have to go to work. You can just sit at home and you're on call. So you might not even get called out, but you still get paid to kind of sit around your room and just chill out for a bit. So it's all right, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah. Is yeah. there a, a bit of a difference between being a short haul pilot and a long haul pilot? You know, is can you sort of choose that or do you just get put on what, whatever flight path you're put on? Um, with that, it depends what airline you go into. So for the shorter, but like the low budget ones like Ryanair or jet to um you normally get put on short hauls and with those you just do a sector there so you fly to a country and then you get everyone off get everyone on and then you fly back all in the same day but with long haul with airlines like british airways virgin people like that they mm -hmm. fly quite far away and then you can get a bit of a mini holiday out of it because i know <laughs> a few friends um, and I'm quite jealous because they fly for work and then they'll land and then they'll do a bit of sunbathing or they'll like explore the town they've landed in. It looks nice. amazing. <laughs> and what do you think of some personality traits that are critical for a pilot? Um, you need to be quite calm. You need to be quite friendly, reasonable. Because at the same time, I know that you are cramped into a cockpit, but you do need quite a lot of 
social skills as well because you do some sometimes you have to deal with the passengers as well um especially you know if they're being quite rowdy or if you need to get them off the plane you need to be quite calm and reasonable and definitely focus because you know it's a lot in one day isn't it it's quite a long day um but yeah definitely just friendly all the positive traits really I think have you started looking at the recruitment process for pilots have you started looking at application processes and things like that and you know if there's anything extra you can do to help make yourself stand out um, I haven't looked properly, but um, what I do know is with JetT, it's it's a funny one. They make you work from, uh, they don't put you as a pilot straight away. It's really strange. They'll make you work on check-in and then cabin crew, which I've already done, so that'd be quite useful. Um, it's just different everywhere, really. Oh, really? They think... make you do check-in and then cabin yeah. crew and then into pilot, really? Yeah, it's so strange. But, yeah, that um, is strange. I think it's paid for as well. It's normally about 30 grand, but they pay it for you. Okay. Um, but it's good to just kind of get an eye in what other departments are doing and it opens your mind a little bit, I think. Um, has, has sort of COVID worried you at all about the industry? Um, It was bad last year in the year. Uh, Wait, no, it's 2021, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it was bad last year. Um, everywhere was grounded, wasn't it? All the planes were on the floor. They weren't flying. Um, but now it's looking a lot better. I'm seeing a lot more people willing to go abroad. Um, but I think once they get rid of the testing and things like that, because that's so. Ex- I think that's what's stopping people having to pay for the PCR tests and things like that. Yeah. And... Um, Obviously, there's still restrictions and countries are on green, amber and red. So I think once all that relaxes, people are going to want to travel a little bit more because it's less stressful. And I think it'll just be easier. And I think it'll definitely recover quicker than you think. Yeah, no, I think you're right. Um, we so we like to talk about sort of different ways people can um, show themselves to the prospective industry they're going into and one of the ways you're doing that really well we think is with your Instagram so like showcasing your journey to becoming a pilot building your hours you know where you're going all the trips you do Um, I guess did you have the intention of using this as a way to make yourself stand out or was it just to you know track the journey um, I didn't really use it as to like stand out really I just did it for fun I just thought I'd share my adventures with everybody and then like last year I think the year before I had like hardly any followers and then I started posting about my flying adventures and then the followings just got gradually more and more and I was just so surprised <laughs> I didn't think I'd get so many likes on my pictures as well I'm still surprised <laughs> to this day like how did I get that many likes um yeah just share it just for you know inspiration or just uh I like to help people as well I get a lot of messages like asking how to get into the flying career and how I'm doing and I just like to inspire really so for anyone listening what would be their first steps to going towards this kind of you know private pilot into commercial pilot what what kind of things can they do I definitely watch a few youtube videos maybe just to see what it's like before you dive into paying for a trial lesson just look around on the internet um watch a few videos um look at pilots instagrams and then i'd definitely recommend in booking a trial lesson at a local flight school and then you can kind of go from there see if you like it and what is the trial lesson what sort of what does that involve um, so you turn up on the day and then you can get in a plane and then they'll just take you somewhere like a destination airfield. So for my first trial lesson, I went to Shropshire and then they let you have a little fly as well. So that's quite good. You can kind of gauge how it's going to be and then they'll give you like the whole rundown. And it's just nice visiting somewhere as well because, you know, that's what the future is going to hold for you. You'll be able to just visit anywhere make new friends it's really nice and the exams you're doing is it the atpl yeah that's right yeah so what's the process of doing those do you have to have had hours before you can even apply to do these tests or can you start doing them whenever you want 
Um, you can just start them after you get your PPL license. So once you've got that, you can apply to a school. There's quite a few schools, so it takes some research to find which one's best for you. So I'm with Bristol Brown School and it's quite hard. It's all self-study, so you don't get any teachers. You have to kind of learn it yourself, but they are there. You know, you can drop them an email if you're confused about anything. Mm-hmm. Um and it normally takes you around 13 months, but it's took me longer just because I thought the airline industry has gone a bit, you know, yeah. crazy. So I just took my time with it. And I sat my first exams in March mm-hmm. and then you get, yeah, so you get 13 months to complete all 14 exams. So, okay. yeah, it's quite tricky. It's quite it tricky. Sounds, it sounds like a bit of a silly question, but what yeah. kind of things are involved in the, you know, what kind of subjects would help you um, when you're doing these exams? Oh, definitely maths and physics. So if you're taking your A-levels, definitely do maths and physics because it's helped me quite a lot. And there's, on your training, there's like a section on maths and physics. You just need to kind of, remind yourself um about the basics and then um there's quite a lot of it involved in the theory as well so because I've already I already kind of know what's going on it just helps so much more I definitely recommend taking those subjects at Mm. college and obviously you said this was a a bit of a dream for you when you um were a child you first went on the plane but are there any other um draws for you uh that have uh put you in this industry anything else that you think yeah that's one of the reasons why i've gone into this a just a sense of freedom really because you know there's so much going on on the ground it's just nice to be in the air and get away from it all and um it's just fun i just like the freedom and the feeling of being up in the air and the views are just insane especially if you fly at sunset and the sun Ooh, setting yeah. it's cool. gorgeous yeah, yeah it's really nice and has there along the way been any um negatives or setbacks anything uh where you think oh why am i doing this i shouldn't be doing this um i've i've had a few moments where i've been upset just because of how long my training took because of i was in college and I could only fly at the weekends. And when the weather's bad, you can't fly. So it took me a while to get through it. And once you cancel so many times, you kind of forget how... I know it sounds crazy, but you kind of forget how to fly a little bit. It's not as easy <laughs> as riding a bike. Um, but yeah, so it took longer than I expected. And it made me a little bit upset. But, you know, it's life, isn't it? Well, thank you so much for coming on and talking to us about, you know, your journey and, and wish you the best of luck with your exams and, and getting oh, your commercial thank pilot's you. license. Thank you. That's lovely. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Uh, where can people find your Instagram and uh, reach out if they wanted to? What's that? Sorry. Uh, well, what's your Instagram handle? And if you're on any other platforms. Uh, what's your my Instagram username? Yeah, please. Um, let me have a look. Um, it's Becca B E C C A E for Echo Delaney D E L A N E Y, and awesome. then that's about it. That's the only place I really post my pictures. Amazing! Thank you again, Becca. Oh, thank you so much.